What's up? What's up? What's going on? We are all the way live. Yeah. With uh, Dead Pit, Born to be Rad, Simulcast Night. Wow, can you believe it? Some high-tech stuff going on here. That is that's crazy, man. Very high-tech. <laughs> Very high-tech. I know. I know. Right, let's see what it's I insane. It's insane. It's insane. See, I was just talking to um, Garrett before we started. Okay. I did not go to work today. <laughs> like a, it's it's a, a what is it? what was the Frozen World uh, in Star Wars? That's what it is Hoth, out there. Whatever Hoth or something. Yeah, yeah, like the, yeah. yeah. So um, Ice Storm, which is still kind of ongoing, I think it quit. But uh, I want to try to go to work tomorrow. But it's been been a weird day. I didn't really do anything at all. So, how you been doing? I'm doing good, man. Uh, I just actually got home from work, so I rushed out back to, back here and got this thing ready to go. So I've been working all day today. But uh, well, you'll I'm sleep here. good tonight. Of course. That's what I always say when you have a busy day and uh, you're really, you know, you'll sleep good at least. You look forward to that. <laughs> Yeah, I always I always sleep well, so I have to really say that no matter what, like I never really have a bad night's sleep. I have to say. Yeah, I always sleep well um, too, but you know my wife seems to complain about I I tend to moan and snore and lo- <laughs> uh, a lot and shit. So she does not uh, sleep as good as me, but I sleep pretty good. Yeah, you know I've heard that too from my house, and uh, I always just wonder if uh, if they're being uh, honest or not. I'm like, are you sure? Are you just saying that? Are you making that up? I don't believe you. <laughs> you know, but uh who knows who knows yeah well my wife she's videoed me before so i know i, do it, <laughs> I, I don't you know it is what it is so tonight we're doing something kind of interesting um which the documentary um life after the navigator we're gonna be talking about that if you're not familiar with what that is we did a review on Garrett's channel, which is born to be rad on YouTube, uh, discussing the film flight of the navigator from the mid eighties. So we decided to do a review of the documentary that recently just came out. I think what was the first of uh, February on Amazon prime. So we're going to be talking about that here in a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, and again, I don't, when was this, this wasn't, this is new to Amazon prime, but had this been out prior to this, right? I looked on their website, which the filmmakers name Lisa downs, which you've spoke with her a little bit on Instagram. Uh, she was yep. aware of the last video that we, we did. Hopefully she'll check this one out. Um, she's doing a series of these movies. Uh, they have a website. I think it's, lifeaftermovies.com um so they're making this kind of a series of films um mainly she's from around our you know early 80s grew up in the Mm -hmm. 80s and all that so a lot of the same movies that we are you know fans of she's working on so we'll talk about the other movies as well as the uh video rolls along but um I think they have a Blu-ray out, so that more than likely came out first. Mm -hmm. And I know it was available to stream on Amazon for rent or whatever like that, but now it's for free for anybody that's got Amazon Prime. You can check it out. Yeah, um, that's what it it seems like. I kind of looked into it, and and you're right. Like They're doing a whole series of these. uh, She had mentioned that the next one that they're going to be working on is – we'll we'll talk about it, but um, you know, it has to do with NeverEnding Story, and I think it's a real cool concept, man, especially for, for, you know, I was going to say kids our age, right? Uh, <laughs> for people our age, I think it's a real cool concept because I love all that stuff, you know, like even the stuff on Netflix that people are doing, like, you know, toys that made us and all, and all those things. Mm-hmm. Like I, I dig all those kind of shows, man. So these little documentaries to me is awesome. And I, you know, it's, it's always cool to kind of see what's going on, you know, or behind the scenes stuff about a movie that you grew up with that you just didn't know. And, Honestly, you knew more than I did, but going into this, I didn't really know much about what happened to uh, Joey and all that stuff. So 
Uh, it was definitely a cool watch for me, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting documentary because most of the time when you see a documentary about a film, it's just primarily the making of the movie. Right. Which is interesting enough because, honestly, Disney's not going to be producing a special edition Blu-ray right. of Flight of the Navigator with a documentary making of or anything like that. That's just not going to happen mm -hmm. in 2021 with Disney Plus and all that. That's, you know, they're, they've got bigger fish to fry, if you will, I guess. So it was yeah. cool to see that, too. But it's also about the star of the movie, Joey Kramer, and some of the stuff that he's dealt with since the making of the movie. Mm -hmm. So I thought that it was a real interesting take. It's kind of two documentaries in one, yeah. um, which I think they, I mean, that's kind of a theme in these documentaries that um, life after movies are making and the next one you mentioned the never ending story that one as well um is about the actor that played a tray i think he had some issues as well so it's kind of a different take on it but um i guess we can go ahead and get started and talk about the i guess we can the flight of the navigator movie you and i both grew up with it yep. came out in the early 80s um well, the mid eighties, I guess. And, um, we had questions when we did the review about, you know, it's technically a Disney movie, but not really. Um, right. and they talk about that in the documentary as well, how that came to be. It's kind of an odd Disney production, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, that movie was, it was a popular movie amongst kids, rentals at the time i think it really picked up steam vhs rentals when they played it on tv um so it's gained quite a cult following over the years um disney they released it on dvd here in the united states uh, it never did receive a blu-ray here but i think you said second sight films has a blu-ray yep. release of it out I don't know if it was more of a success in England or what the deal was, but yeah, I know that was a very popular release from second sight films. So the movie has got quite a cult following and the documentary, which I think a lot of people would be interested in seeing just for the making of, like we were saying, the documentary is they get pretty much everybody that's still around from the film itself, which I thought was really interesting. Um, the, the director of the film was there, so he's done a lot of pretty big movies. I mean, we're talking about before uh, his name is Randall Kleiser. He, um, he d directed Greece, which is like right. a classic, you know, right. Everybody knows Greece. Yeah. Uh, and you know, they kind of talk about how Greece had a little bit of a cameo. They played the song in the movie and stuff like that, just as an homage to, to what he's worked on. And, uh, you know, I thought that was kind of cool because it was, it, you know, now knowing that he, you know, did that, you know, it makes a little bit more sense now when you hear that song than it just being a random song on the radio. So, uh, it was definitely kind of cool. And, and to see the people that they, that they got back to talk about this movie was pretty incredible. Like, I mean, they were even able to get, you know, the girl who played, um, jennifer was that her name i think in the movie right yeah. which he's got the we, hots for jennifer bradley yeah it was yeah yeah that was one aspect <laughs> that was one aspect of the movie too where that kind of never went anywhere that right. was like forgotten about but yeah they yeah. got her yeah. um the guy that played jeff the younger jeff both versions of jeff but i would imagine the younger jeff would be a lot more harder to track down right um so they got, they got pretty much everybody back. I mean, Sarah Jessica Parker didn't get her. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't get uh, Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman, mm -hmm. and get him. But other than that, I mean, anybody else that you would want um, interviewed in that, they interviewed. They didn't get the composer um, either. Right, right. Which he, he's still sort of a big deal. Right. You know, so. But yeah, I mean half of the documentary is the making of things that went into it. A lot of interesting stories, stories about how Disney got involved in it. It was originally an independent production. Disney got involved in it. Um, 
for United States distribution. They talked about a lot of the, the CGI in the movie um, was very new at the time. Um, yep. And it, I think they had said it was the same technology that would later uh, James Cameron would use in Terminator two, the, yep. um, the molten metal effect that they would use. So, yeah, it was kinda, definitely ahead of its time. I think, you know, even as a kid at that age to see some of the effects they used, it was very, it was, it was something you never saw. And, you know, the fact that it kind of took place and, you know, it had the spaceship and stuff, like it just kind of made sense with the, with the effects that they used. And yeah, it was kind of cool to, to hear how they did it. Um, I thought that was a real cool aspect as well on kind of the inside of the ship and stuff. And after you and I did our review and I had watched this, uh, my brother checked out the review that we did. It was like, oh, you know what? I haven't watched that in forever. Bring it over. So I brought it over the other night and we watched it again with his wife. And uh, she had never seen it before, surprisingly. And she's our age. And um, hmm. you know, she really liked it. And it was kind of cool going back and seeing it now. And my brother even said like, you know, he's like, I remember a lot of this, but he's even younger than me. So he was like, you know, there's parts I remember like night and day, but there's stuff that definitely was over my head as a kid, you know, watching this when we were younger. And one of the things he said was like, man, the inside of that ship was unreal. All the detail on the chrome and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it definitely still, you know, holds up when you see that and you're kind of like, wow, there was a lot put into that for sure. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like everything effects wise in the movie, um, still holds up pretty well. The CG still doesn't even look that bad, really. No. You know, for 1986, think about that. I mean, that was like what 35 years ago. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> I think one of the reasons was because they used it sporadically. Like they used it for the ship, but it was changing shape. But I mean, other than that, like there was a lot of practical effects in it. So the special effects, I don't think, looked as bad because they were just very, you know, conscious of of what they used it for. Where some of the movies that even came out in like the mid '90s that were going like really special effects heavy, I mean, they don't. To me, as the quality of you know Blu-ray and 4K come out, it makes those effects look even worse. Um, where, like I said, this was a 4K scan that um, 88 Films did, and it still looks great. I think you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, um, the yeah, the documentary, like I said, had two parts. It's got the making of aspect, and then it's got the life of you know, what has happened since to Joe, Joey Kramer, uh, the star mm -hmm. of the movie, which, you know, he's had a lot of issues with, um, substance abuse. And, um, I think he's in like a halfway house right now. It's kind of recovering. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all escalated, which I kind of remember this because it was not too awful long ago where he had attempted to rob a bank mm. and there was like, it was, it was kind of buzz on Facebook, people posting it and stuff like that. So, and he looked re I mean, I did drug testing for like eight years. He looked just like the people that would come in and get drug tested. You know, he looked, mm. he was, he was in a bad spot. So, I mean, it's half of the movie is following him for a couple of years there. I think, um, and just his recovery. And they talked to him about the making of the movie as well. He, him and his mother, both. They, um, I think that he had fun with, with the movie and everything, but at the same time, he wanted to be a regular kid decided to shortly after uh flight of the navigator to, um, just go, I think they're from Canada, go back home and live a regular life, you know? So, I guess as the years went on, he found, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever it was that got him started there. And they, he goes down that rabbit hole, if you will, which is, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's not, and he, he was saying before, if he, if he became a star, if he accepted some of these, I think he had uh, uh, a role, a big role set up for one of the Star Trek shows. He talked about that in the documentary that he would have had as much money as he needed and he would probably overdose and be dead at this right. point. So that's kind of interesting take on it. Um, because honestly, like this was a big, I mean, this is a big Disney movie. He was the star of the movie and he went from that to just, he was gone, you know, he quit. Right. So that's very unusual. Even, even back then, I would think. Yeah, it, it definitely was. And, um, 
you know, at that time, you know, I thought that he was going to be a star. I thought he did a real good job. And one of the things they talked about in this documentary was how they were looking for somebody that was just very natural. And I feel like he did have a lot of like, you know, he felt very natural. He felt very realistic. Um, my sister-in-law actually made a good point. We watched the movie. She's like, wow, he just like starts crying like out of nowhere. And they actually do talk about that in the documentary that one thing they liked about him was like he could put on those tears at the drop of a hat and have it super believable. And man, when he does that in the movie, like it still almost gives you chills because, you know, he's lost and he's he wants to know where his parents are. And like I said in our review, it, it was one of those movies that still has a real eerie tone with me. And um, yeah, I thought he was going to be something special as far as an actor that we were going to see on a regular basis. And everybody I talked to, you included, my brother, they keep getting him mixed up with Henry Thomas. And like my brother said the same thing. He, he's like, oh, he was in. And I'm like, no, that's not him. But I said, everybody says that. Like everybody said, mm -hmm. I've heard, he goes, oh, he was the kid in Cloak and Dagger. I'm like, it's not him. But I said, <laughs> I honestly thought it was right. too. And then um, I said, I know he was the kid in Runaway, which was that movie with Tom Selleck. That's the only other thing I remember him in. And it kind of like, you kind of forgot about him as you got older because he was, like you said, he just was gone. And he was such a lead in this that you thought he had plenty of other things that you were going to see him in going mm -hmm. forward. I mean, for a kid his age to be the complete lead in this movie, like he wasn't even like there was not many other people other than him that it was focused on. And I thought he did he did a great job. And it is sad to kind of see the ro the route that he went, especially like him and his mother said, is they were more concerned keeping him in Hollywood because they kept seeing what was happening to all the other child actors at the time. Uh, they, they actually referenced like what was going on with the brat pack at that time. And they knew like, we better not stay here because this is just going to, you know, this could create a downward spiral if he starts mm -hmm. hanging around in Hollywood a lot longer. And sad to say he leaves Hollywood and ends up on a similar path. You know, it really, it really is kind of, you know, heartbreaking in a sense. Right. Yeah. I mean, especially like, Honestly, like even today, he looks like Henry Thomas. Don't you think so? Like the yeah, grown-up Henry mean, Thomas. Yeah, they, like, very I'm like, much. That's and... just bizarre. Yeah, because for a long time there, I mean, as a kid, I like you, I thought, because you look at this cover, which I brought this back out, you're like, that's Henry Thomas right there. Right? You don't realize they're two different guys or two different actors. Um, yeah, I actually have Cloak and Dagger over here. Do you want to see what, what the front? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> what we'll have the, to he's let's do it at the same on. time. It's the same time there. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can even get your cover with a red shirt. <laughs> I would, but that's in like the other room. Yeah, yeah that's so, insane. Uh, right? It does. It's very similar. And you know what? I think too. What else it was was, you know, at that time, like what was ET? ET was what was it? Eighty four? Was that ET? Or yeah, ET e e was like 80, 82, 83, something like that, I think. So, I mean, you're talking about, as a kid especially, the two movies that you're watching with aliens, right, is, is Flight of the Navigator and E.T. So, you know, it was a very similar type of role, I guess that you would say, um, for, for a young kid kind of jumping into the to that kind of movie. So, uh, it, could, it could easily be confusing, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the arrest... Um... We were talking about he got arrested, though. Was, this was kind of, I guess, the because this is what led him in to get in trouble with, with the law and all that. And he's still, what is it, like four or five years later? This was in 2016. He was a drug addict. And he was just, I guess that was he was out of money. He needed his fix or whatever. And he was desperate. You know, they talk about that a little bit as well. Um, so it's, I mean, it's, um, you know, life after the navigator. Um, it's like I said, it's an interesting take on, it's not just a making of documentary. I mean, they have different, it's a different aspect, different take on it, which I, I really enjoyed. And it goes back and forth. It's, you know, between the making of and uh, Joey's life since. So. Yeah. And that's what, what's pretty cool about this, this little series that, that she's doing is, um, you know, you're getting your documentary for a movie that, you kind of always wanted a little bit more of a documentary on 
But at the same time, it's almost got that twist where it's like you're kind of taking like Dark Side of the Ring documentary style, right? And you're like adding a little bit of a twist to it where it's like, hey, here's about the movie and the making of it. But, you know, there was some controversy here with maybe one of the characters or maybe the movie. And now you're getting a little bit of that backstory too, which I think is a real cool blend. Um, you know, obviously because controversy, you know, is, is people enjoy that in a sense that um, I think that it's kind of a cool take. I mean, yeah, like you said, it, it seemed like they followed him around for a couple of years. So it's pretty crazy mm. that they were working on this for so long to get footage. And, um, you know, it does seem that he's doing well now. And I hope that maybe a documentary like this and, and kind of putting his name back out there will keep him and keep things positive for him because it seems like he's really now embracing um, that character a little bit more. And, you know, it would be cool, like, when conventions and stuff come back, like, you know, it would be pretty cool to, to meet him and get, like, a Flight of the Navigator poster signed. Like, I think that that's definitely something, you know, I'm hoping, you know, is a possibility in the future. And he can, you know, kind of run with this a little bit and uh, wow. get himself back together, you know. And because I think a lot of people and more people that he probably knows uh, would would love to to meet him, you know. Not only that, I mean, he could do some motivational speak you know, speaking and I mean, from just his experiences as well, he's got a really unique opportunity. I mean, he could, he could go both avenues, do the convention scene for the fans of the movie, and then maybe make some new fans with, you know, some of the motivational speaking, which I know a lot of recovering addicts is kind of a, uh, uh, it benefits them as well. Speaking right. about, you know, their, what they, their path and what led them to, you know, turn around and make that decision, you know? So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, after life, after the navigator, if you want to check the movie out, like I said, they interview, um, Howard Hossman, who I remember is the guy from, uh, I think it was the sitcom head of the class back in the day. He's still alive. I couldn't believe that he was the doctor. <laughs> yeah. They interviewed him. They interviewed him in it, uh, which I'm looking up their IMDb page right now. Yeah, this guy is 80, looks like 81 years old, almost 81 years old. So they got him, which he was like, the big thing he was into was uh, WKRP in Cincinnati. I don't know if you remember that show. It's a little bit before our time, but they used yeah. to play reruns of it back in the day. Um, but they got him. They got Veronica Cartwright, who was the mother in the movie and then she she's done all kinds of stuff over the years alien is probably the big movie that a lot of the horror fans remember her in um and they got the dude that played the dad which i don't rem i didn't remember him in anything else his name was cliff d cliff d young no i don't um, remember him anything else either but he has a very unique look like as soon as i saw him i'm like i know him you know and i Surprised. I don't know what else he was in, but he does have a unique look. And I don't know if I'm kind of confusing him with, uh, you know, the dad from like, um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or something like that. But, you right. know, like that, that dad. He dad. is, um, it says he's most well known for The Craft. He was Mr. Bailey in The Craft, the original huh. one. Okay. Not the Bloom House one. <laughs> um, but Matt Adler, they, that was the older Jeff. Which, yeah, which you, he's which been you in a bunch of your favorites. Last time. Yeah, you schooled me on that last time. I can't believe that. Well, to be honest with you, in um, Flight of the Navigator, he's in the shadows a lot. You don't really see him see him too well. So, yeah, but yeah, cool teen, look, though. yeah, Teen Wolf was Lewis. the big one. And yeah, that was one of your all time favorite movies, right there. Yeah, um, and I couldn't put two and two together that he played Lewis in it. Yeah. And dream a little dream. That's another one. I don't know if that's one of your favorites, but it's got some of your favorites in it. <laughs> it's got the Corey's in it, man. Of course. Yeah. Whitewater summer is probably my favorite one that he was in because I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I need to go yeah. back and revisit it, but that is one that I believe arrow is bringing the Blu-ray this, this year coming up. So that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, um, and then they have some of the makeup effects people that are in it. Um, and I mean, it's just, you know, if you're a fan of flight of the navigator, uh, this is a very cool documentary to check out just for that. But I like, you know, the aspect with Joey Kramer is really what drew me into this. 
if it wasn't that, I don't know if I would have been, I mean, I probably would have watched it, but I wouldn't have been that intrigued to check it out because it does take a, it's got a different spin on it um, with that as well. So, yeah, I mean, they go through, like he was homeless at one point in time. There's one photo that they show where um, he was, you know, very much like, um, who is the guy that they found recently? Sean Weiss, I think was his name. The actor from the Mighty Ducks that oh, they, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So a very similar photo. I mean, he didn't have a tooth in his head. He looked like a totally different person yeah. um, in this. And it's just crazy because I've seen, I mean, I've seen it where I worked in that facility for eight years. I've seen people that they're on the verge of death. And then when they quit taking, like, if it's heroin or whatever the hell it is, it, I mean, it's basically like they're poisoning themselves and then they quit. And then almost a month or two later, I mean, they look like a different person. So mm-hmm. that was, uh, that was very cool to see. I mean, I'm glad that he's doing better for sure. Yeah. I'm hoping that this is the, the Kickstarter that he needed this, this just extra support from, from fans and everything else, because, um, yeah, it is sad. And like you said, we, we see it all the time being fans of wrestling, right? Like, you know, what some of these guys go through. And, and you know, when they do get that redemption story, like you said, it, it's uh, it's definitely an avenue that they can really work with and, and really get their self back together. Like, I mean, you saw, you know, what, what's going on with Jake Roberts, you know, and, and how much he's been able to kind of use his past to kind of excel his future, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of success stories in wrestling either. But I mean, that might be um, like she likes doing these documentaries live after. Be a hell of a one to do on wrestling. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could do a multi-part. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. you really could, man, for sure. And I'm sure when you really start digging deep into, you know, the weeds of movies that we grew up with as well, like I'm sure there's other things out there that you know it's probably a very similar story, you know, sadly, like a Corey aim or whatever is not here to kind of do that. But, um, you know, there's probably a lot out there and I know that she had done one as well for flash. You said as well, um, for the flash, is it the flash Gordon one, right? Yeah, that was the first one that they did. I think that one, um, that one's on Amazon prime as well from 2017, I believe was the year that one dropped. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested in seeing that. I didn't even I hadn't even known it was on Prime, so I'll definitely check that out. Um, if it's along the similar lines, but um, the next one seems really cool too, just because again, you, you're talking you're not even talking about a main character of the movie for uh, a Treyu, so it's going to be kind of interesting to kind of see. And uh, you also brought some other names up, you know, when you and I were talking of like other people that they could really start you know, getting the ball rolling on this. And I, I would think a lot of people would be very interested in, in having a documentary about them. And um, the, the, the list, the list is out there and it's just kind of, you know, getting the ball rolling. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I believe they, um, from what I've looked up, they have life after um, a tray is the name of the new one. Um, and they filmed most of it from what I could. And I was interesting too. I was interested too. Well, I love the never ending story. Like I, we'd spoke about that in the last video that we did. Um, the film star, I don't think that they, they've got him yet for the documentary or if they're, maybe we can find out Baird Oliver is his name. He is like a recluse when it comes to this sort of thing and doesn't give interviews. So I would I would be very interested in seeing if they could get him for it. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, that whole story behind that and just how, you know, I I sent you the photo. You would never in a million years think it was the same guy. Right. Right. Definitely not. Uh, I know what else is interesting. Now you bring it up is that um, they actually talk about in this documentary that um, Joey Kramer had a role in never ending story. He was like a, he was like a, a, what he was a backup for, for some scenes on, on one of the kids and stuff. Like he was kind of in the background, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting that it ties together um, with what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I never really knew that either, but um, yeah, I'm as far as the never ending story one though, 
I'm interested in seeing that as well. I know, I know that um, the actor that played Atreyu did have some issues as well. I don't know if it was like the issues that, that Joey Kramer had, mm-hmm. but um, you know, anything like that always interests me for sure. Yeah. How about life? How about life after T2? Edward Furlong story. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I think his, his, his story is uh, a long way from being over. Maybe. Yeah. So we'll yeah, see. So. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just definitely highly recommend it as well. I think it's just the, it, it, to me, what intrigued me the most was that it was, it kind of brought back a life for the movie, this movie that, you know, I've always had was fond for. Like I said, I did buy the 88 films disc because, you know, it is one of those movies that I always, you know, was into. But, you know, it, it kind of fell off a little bit in the sense where it was a couple of years since I'd seen it. And, you know, now that this kind of came out, it's giving it a whole new life where like, dude, we just did two shows talking about this movie. And I did another show a couple of weeks ago about childhood movies that I grew up with. And that was on there, too. So we're talking like three, three episodes or three different shows that we're talking about Flight of the Navigator. I mean. So it definitely has kind of brought a little bit new life to to the movie itself. Right, right. Yeah, and the thing is, too, is like where Disney owns it here in the United States, everybody can watch it. I mean, it's on Disney. If you have Disney Plus, you can check it out. That's how I watched it this last go around. Mm -hmm. Um, So hopefully a new generation will check the movie out because like we were saying earlier, it's not really dated that much. You know, it still looks good, and there's nothing in it that looks, oh, that's just so, it looks so bad or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some Muppet top character, like Dark Crystal type characters in it. Right. But to me, that's fun. Like, I love stuff like that. Yeah. And, and it's still really interesting to me as well that, you know, this was picked up by Disney because when you watch this, um, there's a lot of moments where, you know, my brother and I were watching it and we kind of laughed. Like, that's not a Disney you know, they wouldn't say that in the Disney movie. Like, right. for instance, the kid running around saying, like, you know, get back, Jack, I've got a gun. Like, what movie are their kids talking about having guns? And, you know, there are just, like, little things here and there where you're kind of like, yeah, it's just it's just a little bit not what you see nowadays. And it's just nice to see a movie like that that is on Disney Plus that nobody went in and, like, shaved some lines or scenes out because they're like, oh, that's not – you know, appropriate in 2020 or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So for a kid's movie. So um, I think that's pretty cool as well, that it kind of has, you know, it, it, it shows the time, you know, it's just time is very different now. And it's nice to go back and to just see, you know, how things were and that it wasn't that big of a deal back then, you know, like how, you know, as a, as kids and, you know, I'm not like pro gun all over the place here, but at the same time, like how many times did we play with toy guns as a kid? You know, and now it's like you could never go to the store and buy a toy gun. You know what I mean? Like, it's just little things like that. that yeah, it went from, um, you remember the little plastic guns that would like make like a little rattling noise when you pushed yeah, it? And it looked have, like a regular, yeah, it was yeah. like a olive I green color. Like Uzi or something I have in my, I have an Uzi from my kid. It was a squirt gun and it looks, it's black. And when you press mm-hmm. it, it actually goes like this and it shoots the water out. And I'm like, this is like the most realistic looking toy I've ever had. And I was able to keep that one because it was electronic and I always thought it was kind of cool. But like you said, you're right. Like it was those guns back when we were kids, if they were squirt guns or not, like they, they looked real. Yeah. I mean, they were like dark. They, you know, I think after a while they decided to put like a neon orange tip right. on them or something like that. And then they just went from that to making them all like neon orange. And then they just kind of went away. I don't think that yeah. they're around at all anymore. No, I don't know if I ever mentioned this story. I might've mentioned it on one of our shows that we did, but um, I know it's off topic, but I went to Disney um, one year with my, with my family. And for whatever reason we, my brother and I bought like cowboy hats. He bought like a, you know, one of those raccoon hats that like Davy Crockett used to wear with the right. camera back. Yeah. And we each bought like these like little like guns. They looked like, like revolvers or whatever. And we ended up, they ended up stopping us at the airport when they were scanning the bags through because those things were in there. So they saw like the outline of like guns or whatever. So they kind of pulled them out and they ended up taking them away and we weren't able to bring them home. But, you know, I just thought it was one of those things like, dude, I bought, we bought that at Disney. <laughs> you know? What's, what's interesting though, is like, um, when we were kids, maybe that, maybe this did happen. We just didn't know about it, but I don't think so. The school shootings and stuff like that. Did that ever happen in like the eighties and early nineties? 
I don't know. The first time I heard about it, I was in high school with the uh, with the shooting in uh, Columbine. I was actually in right. high school when that happened, and that was like the first time that I had ever recalled it. Um, unless we were just so young and oblivious to things that went on, but it just kind of seemed like everything before that, like it didn't. I I don't recall anything, at least from where I live. I don't either. The Columbine one was the, I think because there were they planned it out and there were so many that got killed. That was big. I'm sure it happened every once in a while, but it wasn't. And then when they started to restrict the toy guns, Mm -hmm. it seemed like it just went up. uh, Like that makes no sense really, but yeah. Is it it always go back to the, you know, uh, you always want what you can't have or something like that. Like when it becomes more like you can't get it or they ban it, it's more people want to use it. Right. Where there, yeah, there may be something to that. You I know. mean, even laser tag, remember those guns? Like they didn't look realistic. They looked futuristic, but I think there was also an issue with those, those black ones that we used to have as kids that I think they ended up having to change them because they almost looked a little too realistic, even though to me, they look like something straight out of star Wars. But, um, mm-hmm. I think there was also an issue with those. And I think there was an issue with the Nintendo gun originally because oh, yeah. they, changed it, they changed it to that orange. Right. And I always had a gray one. And then you could only buy it in orange. And I think that they did that on purpose. They had a gun for the um, lethal enforcers. I think was the, the name of the, yep. the game on Sega Genesis. Mm-hmm. And they actually like went to Supreme court on it or some, there was some sort of big deal, even though it was like a baby blue colored, but it was right. a mold of a real gun. Right, right. A real handgun. So, so were they were they worried that someone could spray paint it and like hold somebody up and you know what I mean? Like, I, is that what they're? Yeah, was, I suppose really? so. I mean, that's possible. I'm not really sure, but I mean, it was it was the mold of like a hand a large handgun, mm-hmm. um, but it was just baby blue. So, right. I remember that so, was yeah. a big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just crazy to just think of like how different uh, times were and and things like that weren't too big of a deal back then, like. Um, you know, even in this movie, like as, as little as it is, you know, when his brother jumps out of the car at the beginning and starts squirting him with the squirt gun, right? Like it was just, you know, it, it, we played laser tag as kids shooting each other with these fake guns. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just part of it. And you'd never see kids now running around the neighborhood playing guns, you know, like it just wouldn't happen. Right. Um, which is actually, you know, kind of a toying on that idea. Uh, I know it's a little bit off subject, but there's another cool movie from, I think, the 80s that anybody should check out that is called gotcha have you ever heard of this um i've heard of it i don't think i've ever seen it if i have i don't remember it uh it, it was put out by kino Lorber, Lor- Bear, however we want to say it um uh, mm-hmm. they put it out and it's actually really cool and i always wonder if it was based on the game or the game was based on it. i mean there was a game for nintendo called gotcha it was like a shooting game right yeah i do remember that i think i've got that somewhere Yeah, I don't know if it has to do with this movie at all, but basically the premise is it's a college kid who, like, plays this game where he runs around school and, like, shoots people with, like, this gun that basically, and it's, like, a big joke. Like, it looks like a real gun, but I think it shoots, like, a pellet or or something, but he walks around Mm -hmm. in, like, school and, like, shoots people, and then when they look at him, he's like, oh, gotcha, and everybody, like, laughs, like, oh, man, I'm thinking to myself, like, how could, that would never get away with that ever at all like, no a college kid being like hey i'm just gonna come to school with this gun and like pretend to shoot everybody and then when i get him i'm gonna say gotcha and like he's running around like the school like in the school like hiding like this like when someone comes by and then shoots him he's like oh i gotcha and they're like oh man and i'm like it's actually kind of fascinating to watch because you're like wow like how There's... could this even be realistic <laughs> you know well th- something similar that happened um it's a really horrible slasher movie called final exam uh do you have that one Final exam. It sounds very, very familiar. Yeah, I'm sure I they, probably have it, but like a group of kids get in trouble for faking a school shooting, pretty much. This was like in the early eighties. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's, it's like nothing. It's like all oh, they're they're just stupid kids having fun, right? And I'm like mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> It's funny how we look at it now as adults, right? Because but back then right. that's awful. I mean, we could do like a whole show on awful slasher movies, but that is an awful one. That is terrible. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. yeah, so I don't want to ramble on, but uh, if anybody wants to check out Gotcha, that's another good one. Uh, along with, obviously, Life at Navigator, we both you know, are really high on this little series that's getting put out. And 
you know, we'd love to do, you know, we even chatted too, like, you know, if Lisa checks this out, maybe doing some kind of interview or something like that. Yeah, I just think that'd be interesting because all these movies, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the, um, what was the first one? I'm drawing Flash a blank. Gordon. Flash. Yeah, Flash. I mean, I own it. That's probably not one that I, I grew up watching a lot or whatever. Right. But Never yeah. Ending Story and Flight of the Navigator, man, like those are ones that I burn up as a kid on video. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we'll talk about all of them, but um, I'm really enjoying what they're doing. The um, Life After a Tray is the one that they're filming now. And that should, I think that the, you know, the pandemic um, delayed them quite a bit on that one. Uh, but they've got a bunch of it shot. If you go on their website, you can check out some photos and stuff like that. Yeah, and you said on their website you can buy a physical copy of their past uh, stuff, is right? Past do documentaries? Yeah, they've got the first two on there on Blu-ray, uh, Life After Flash, and um, Life After the Navigator. I think it's region-free Blu-ray as well, so um, it's pretty, pretty cool pretty cool concept and yeah. we definitely wanted people to check this movie out it's a little bit under the radar but you can check it out on uh, amazon prime for free right now if you've got the uh, subscription yeah amazon prime uh, like you said you even said the their older one about flash is on there too which i'm definitely going to check out next but yeah definitely catch this guys while it's there uh who knows how long this will be available for for free if you have amazon prime um highly recommended for sure uh, definitely give it a thumbs up, especially like I said, if you know, if, if this movie is something you grew up with, it's definitely a cool story to kind of uh, piggyback off of that. No doubt, no doubt. So, yeah, I guess that's all we were wanting to do tonight. If, um, is there anything else you wanted to mention on here? Or? Uh, no, I just wanted to kind of bring awareness to this, to this cool documentary and, like you said, this cool series that, uh, that they're doing over there and um you know just trying to kind of get the word out and just give our thoughts on it and, and i think we both are in agreement that uh it was it was a cool documentary and it's highly recommended so i don't have anything negative to say about it um it keeps your interest and uh again it, it just really you know opens your eyes to new things that you didn't realize i honestly and i don't know how i missed it but i don't remember any of this with the bank robbery or anything like that i must have just it must have just went over my head uh, at that point. And I was definitely, you know, a fan of it. You said it only happened a couple of years ago. I don't know why mm -hmm. it kind of flew over the radar with me. So it was all new to me watching this thing um, about what happened to him. Yeah, I actually remember it clearly. It was on, um, people were just posting about it on Facebook, you know, it was like something on the, you know, USA Today website was shared or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was kind of out there. I did remember, like I said, 2016, so not too awful long ago, but <clears throat> it is what it is. I'm glad he's doing, he's doing better now. And hopefully this, uh, interest in this documentary will, uh, encourage him to keep going, you know? Yeah. Cause it's no, not easy. Great. Yeah. No, definitely. I, that's the thing you can, you, you know, more than I do, right. Cause you've seen it, you've dealt with it, um, with, with people for years and it's sad because you, you want them to do so well, but it, it, it's such a hard journey and it can go south anytime. So, you know, hopefully he's got the right support system around him and hopefully he's got, um, you know, that, that strength to kind of keep moving and know that, you know, there are people out there that truly do care and, and, you know, let's get, let's get mm -hmm. him back, back to health, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Cause like, like I said, I know it's not easy. Um, and addiction is like a lot of people I've always considered a disease. Some people don't, but I can tell you that it affects people much like a disease affects them. So, mm -hmm. um, and the big thing about drugs and everything else, are most of the time, nine times out of 10, you're always going to relapse at some point, but you just got to get back at it. I mean, that's just a natural, like look at Jake, the snake, like you were talking about earlier, look at how many times he got clean screwed up, got clean, screwed up again. But when eventually something clicked in his head, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I no. guess that's it. We don't ramble too much yeah. here, but, uh, uh, yeah, we don't want to go off topic too much. We did a couple times, but, um, yeah, we just wanted to bring awareness to this, to this cool documentary, this cool series. So, you know, I definitely, uh, I'm glad we were able to kind of figure out how to do this simulcast. That was cool. Um, 
And, you know, definitely thanks to anybody who checked this out live or anybody who checked it up on the replay here. Um, you know, leave a comment below. Let us know if you've seen it. Uh, let us know what you guys think of it for sure. Yeah, if you're a fan of the movie, it's a must watch for sure. But if you're just a fan of good, I mean, it's a good, well-made documentary. I mean, it's interesting. So um, you'll definitely want to check it out. It's out right now on Amazon Prime for free if you've got the subscription. If you want to get the Blu-ray, uh, their website, again, they've got it on lifeaftermovies.com. You can check it out. Yeah, definitely. Definitely worth adding that in the collection. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm glad to do this. All right. Well, we will catch you guys next go around. We'll we'll think of something else cool to review. Yeah, we'll, we'll find get, some more. We'll get something brewing for sure. We'll we'll find some more stuff. We may do the we we're talking about another WrestleManiacs at some point in the near future. Maybe we can get that crew back together and do uh do another classic wrestling event or something like that. It'd be fun too. Definitely. I'm down. All right. Well, you guys, thanks for watching, and we will catch you guys next time. Stay rad, born, everybody. Born to be rad. Check it out on YouTube or deadpit.com. <laughs> All right, bro. Thank you so much. All right. Take it easy, man. All right. Later. See you.